everyone, I'm Dustin here with Steeplehead Studios. Today I want to look at some Republican Roman units. Not just any units, I'm going to be looking at smaller units, okay? And Hail Caesar, there are different unit sizes. Most people are going to be familiar with the standard size units. The Republican Roman army has small units, so a lot of their unit frontages will be halved. So I'm just going to look at a bunch of different tactics which I will have to eventually employ and make use of in future games when I'm playing as my Republican Romans. And I thought, okay, this would just be a nice chance to maybe show some of the viewers how charges or moving around in Hail Caesar works. I know a few people on uh, a Protonian forum that I follow, the Round Table of Protonia, some of, the, uh, some of the people following my threads were asking, oh, maybe you can show us some mechanics in Hail Caesar. So I figured, okay, this is my chance to show you guys how it's going to work. So I got a bit of a little setup here, and we're just going to uh, walk through some different scenarios and um, different uh, situations that might come up if, uh, if you end up uh, playing as the Republican Romans or playing against the Republican Romans or any army that uses small unit sizes. So let's look at my little board and see what happens. So today for the Roman forces I have two small units. We've got some Hastati in the right in front there and we've got some Velites. There's some light infantry in the back left there. Those are the Romans. Now normally if I was playing it would probably be the Hastati on the right and then the uh, Principe their um, heavy, uh, heavy veteran brothers, I guess, behind them. But I don't have any other Romans painted up, save these. And um, they're going to be used uh, as they are in this game, just to show the demonstration. So that's the Roman side. And on this side over here, we have um, a whole mishmash of people in a standard size unit. There are eight models across, it's 160 millimeters. Let's call them Illyrians. They're Illyrian armed slaves. <laughs> so they've got different groups of people from all over. Maybe you recognize some of the Warhammer models in there, some of the Bretonians that I've put in other games. Um, but yeah, they're going to be the enemies of the Romans. They're going to be Illyrian, arms, Illyrian armed slaves in this game. Okay, and you can see here that I've set the uh, Romans and uh, the Illyrians across from each other. They are roughly, what is it, 12 inches apart? I think I purposely did that so they're in the uh, proximity and uh, initiative ranges. Uh, within 12 inches you can, units can move on their own initiative um, and in proximity rule they have to move either backwards or forwards to an enemy. They are considered too close to do any fancy uh, uh, maneuvering around and stuff like that. Some, some, some units have various rules on that, but we won't worry about that right now. You can see that the Romans here are in this, uh, they're in this manable system, right? Now normally if I had my full army, it would be something like, okay, a small unit here, a small unit here, a small unit here, they'd have a checkered board formation. There'd be another unit behind here, the Triarii, right? If you know your history, it's going to be Hastati, Principe, and then the Triarii in the back. And that's how the Roman um, attack line would work. You have the wave of Hastati going, you'd have a wave of Principe behind them, and oftentimes the Triarii, triarii were the back, the rear guard. They, they oftentimes didn't get involved in the games, but I think in Hail Caesar you will want them to get involved. <laughs> but uh, for today we'll just use these two units here, so let's just look quickly how they're set up, okay? Let's see here. On a normal turn, we would have, if it was the Romans turn here, turn here, and I was a general, I would have my general say somewhere here nearby, and he would order them to go forth. I would, I would not use my initiative here, as um, you only get to one move with the initiative that's six inches for infantry, so I would probably use my general, and I would use a divisional order, ordering these two units to both charge the same unit. That's great and wonderful. Why is that great and wonderful? Because they are both in with 12, and if I roll to pass, under my uh, general's leadership and all the rules, they would both easily make it, and both moving in, they would charge in and smack into the enemy like so, right? So you can see they're all clashed up there now. Now that is probably going to be the most typical situation that happens, where if I'm fighting against Gauls or Carthaginians or, or um, Greeks or something like that, 
the enemy across from me is going to be a standard size unit. The standard size unit is going to be easier to charge as if my units are split up like I just had them there uh, in the checkerboard formation and using a division or divisional order to go forth with two. No problem here. If this was Hastati and Principes, they'd get a whole bunch of attacks and such. Okay, so that's the first scenario where, as the Roman, you're going to be charging with two smaller units. And you'll want to almost always charge with two units, and I'll show you why here. Okay, so I've moved them back here, and uh, again, here in this scenario, let's say that these Hastati here are facing off against these Illyrian armed slaves, and it's just them. Okay, there's two scenarios that could happen. Let's just say it's them solo. Should I charge? Now, Illyrian armed slaves are not that tough. They're medium troops, they're levy troops. I probably would charge them. Hastati are heavy soldiers in the Republican army and I, I don't think I would necessarily be afraid to have my small heavy units charge a bunch of armed slaves on their own, all right? So let's say they're lined up here and I'll go in a little bit behind to give you guys a better idea. From my view, it would look like this. Now, in order to do this charge, it always says when you charge, you have to take the most direct and uh, closest route when you charge an enemy. So in this scenario, my charge would just look something like this, okay? This is a small unit, and it would have to go directly onto the side. Okay, no big deal. A smaller unit charges a bigger unit, and if they're on the side there, that's the most direct and quickest way without moving into the enemy, all right? If they were, if they were over here, again, they would charge and they'd connect here. Normally, if they're the same size, they have to maximize. But when you're a small unit, oh, there you go, flying off the base. When it's a small unit, they're gonna charge towards the closest, most direct route that leads the, at least uh, the edge of them hitting the center front of the enemy and the center front of your own unit hitting the enemy. Now, that's an important thing to do, because if I am, rather, that's an important thing to take note of, because if I am charging the enemy, and say I'm charging here, okay, I had them at the sides here, right? So this one would charge at that side, that one would charge that side. You have to take the most direct route. If I was dead center and I said charge, this becomes a problem. Uh, maybe not against these Illyrians it wouldn't be, but if these were heavier troops it would be an issue. If I charge, I have to go in the center because here the center is the closest, most direct route. I have seen other people in their games as a small unit, and this is wrong according to the rules. They'll be in the center, okay, say they're in the center like this. That's the closest unit, and then their buddies are behind here. They're like, okay, we're gonna charge, and then they do something like this. They shuffle these guys over, that's wrong. You have to take the most direct route towards the enemy. So the most direct route towards the enemy is straight ahead, which means the other guys you wanted to charge aren't going to make it. Their center front is not gonna co co connect in any way with, or rather, their front line is not going to connect in any way with this enemy center front. So the best these guys could do in, in, in this kind of scenario is, is support. So, small units in the Republican Roman army, you want to make sure when you are charging enemies, you want to get more guys in there. You, you know, oftentimes you don't want to just send one small unit in to die. <laughs> you want to have buddies to go in to die together, or at least win together is the plan. So when you're charging and you're on your lonesome, it's always better to come in from a side because if you are in the dead center of it, you have to take the direct route and go straight in the center. You can't shuffle over if you're there. You have to take the closest and most direct route towards the enemy. So that's one thing to remember if you're using small units in Hail Caesar. You gotta position them in the right spot, right? And I can't do any fancy dancing around because of proximity. I have to go forward, I have to go backwards, okay? So that's one thing to one scenario. Okay, so let's look at that again, okay? Here's my Velites, they're off the screen right now. And I say, okay, these are some weak um, Illyrian slaves. Let's charge. I charge in from the side and I get the most direct route. Okay, this is legal. These guys fight for a turn. There's no, there's no damage, you know, okay. Maybe some wounds happen, some people get hurt. Nobody breaks, nobody flees. It's the enemy's turn. Let's say the same thing happens, okay? It, it might happen. There could be draws twice. Anyway, 
It's the Roman turn after the enemy's turn. I now have space here to have my other small unit come along and join in the fray because there is room for them as long as they're here there's room for them on the side to charge in and join, right? So from here it's great, it's good to have. Remember when I said that if you're here and you charge there's no room for them to join in. So if you're in a prolonged fight where you're using your your sustained values to fight an enemy you'll want to be on the side because you might have a smaller unit come and enjoy. Now remember, a standard, a standard size unit cannot fit in here. It would be too long. He could come and support maybe, but that's it. So this would be best for the smaller units. It has to be smaller units that fit in that frontage and meet the center front of the enemy, right? It's the corner here. This center front's meeting the enemy, but then his center front's meeting the corner, right? Another thing to remember, according to the rule book, if my guy is here, this is an exception, small units are kind of cool. If my small unit is here, I can order him to charge and he's actually allowed to do this and go right around them. So small units that have an opening on the right, if they're behind him, he's not, he's allowed to charge almost around his friendly unit there. And that's the only time that can happen when smaller units are engaged. If they have another small unit behind them, they can actually charge right like that. Okay, and that's only small units can do that. Standard units, large units, they cannot do that at all. So you can see that uh, you have to uh, you have to really position your charges proper. Okay, now let's say it's not the Romans' turn in this scenario. Let's say it's the Illyrian turn. Uh, it's the let's say it's the Illyrians' turn this time. Okay, they're gonna charge me. They get a successful charge off. Just move over to the side here. So let's say the Illyrians here, that's, that's the unit, just disregard my oversized movement base. Um, they get a successful charge, okay? And they're gonna charge. They have to go towards the enemy they've declared, okay? This is the closest enemy for proximity, so it makes sense. They have to charge them, that's who they see. Now, when these guys are gonna charge up here, they're not gonna, they're not even worried about these guys in the back. These guys can't support, they're not on the side, they're not in the back. They're just gonna go straight up like this. Bam! They're gonna clash with those guys. They have to line up with the center front, okay? These are just little dinky Illyrian slaves. They have <laughs> no good attack, no good clash. They're, you know, they're, just, they're not the best soldiers. However, if these are heavier troops, that is a standard heavy troop going against a small heavy troop in this situation. That is not good for these guys. So, as the Romans, when you're lining up and you're getting ready to fight and, and, and attack, I, you have to be aggressive, I do believe. Because if you just let your small unit sit there, the enemy's standard size small units, you know, Carthaginian, Libyan spearmen, or um, Greek phalangites, they're just gonna come in and they're gonna smash and roll you guys if you're not careful. So the Romans, you must get in, you must get them in attacking first so they can take advantage of their small unit positions. Because getting attacked, having a small unit, these guys are fragile. They have stamina 4 against stamina 6. They only have 5 attacks versus 7 attacks if these guys were heavy. Um, these guys are at a huge disadvantage here. Second 2, now that this fight is going on, alright, say they draw or lose, um, the, okay, let's say they lose or they, they just hold the ground. That's great and all. These guys can't do anything now except for support. They can maybe shuffle in and support from the back or shuffle up and support like this, but they're not able to get all their attacks in, right? They have to be lined up properly as I showed you moments ago how, how that works. One good thing about this though, and one defensive thing that's good is that if these guys do lose and give ground, okay? Let's say they retreat in good order. They're retreating backwards. These guys want to pursue. Oh, now they have an incidental contact with this enemy. So this is one thing. Uh, this is one thing that is kind of your saving grace if you if you end up in this uh, weird uh, the enemy charge your maniple situation. The unit behind them can stop them. All right, and then that becomes an incidental contact, and then that just uh, they have to do some separation. And admittedly, I had to go check that really quick about incidental contacts because I've never actually had a... I <laughs> haven't played a game where the... We always use standard units, so I haven't played a game yet where there is one. But uh, say this happens where this guy's blocking this. These guys, even though they won, have to move back six inches away from the enemy. 
And that's what happens when an incidental contact happens. And then these guys escape. They might be shaken, disordered, maybe they're useless, maybe they're, you know, so hurt they're not going to do any more charging. But yeah, that's the only scenario I think where if you're the Romans and you're being charged like this, that the guys behind you are going to help you at all. So these guys can act as speed bumpers, but ultimately I think it's better if you can engage the enemy first and get your max attacks in. Okay, and the other scenario, the last little scenario I want to go through here is, the other thing you could do is you could just line your small units right up. Now you have a super unit of two small, it's not really one unit, um, <laughs> it's two units side by side. So what's the enemy going to do if he gets a successful charge in? Well, he's charging two on one and that's what he does. He's just going to slide right up there and he's going to be fighting two guys at once. He'll have to divide up his attacks as the rules state and you're going to get a whole bunch of attacks against them, okay? Two small units fighting one big one here is good. The Romans here as heavies have five attacks, five and five, let's say they're heavy, five and five, that's ten attacks. Normally a standard size unit, which would be this many soldiers, only has seven, right? So two small units clashing with a um, another standard unit, especially the Republican Roman ones, can be, can be quite devastating on the go. And then imagine if you have two more small units in support behind them. The Triarii have a bonus to their support, so they definitely would be in there, right? So you get a whole bunch of attacks with small units as well. Now here's the problem with the Republican Romans. Their units are not cheap. This small unit is quite expensive. Um, I think it's something like 27 points. I, you can watch my other video to get the point value. But this small unit of heavies is quite expensive. Two of these small units of heavy cost more than a one standard size of hoplites, okay? Now, assuming that they're here, here's the issue. You're going to have a lot of points in, in at least half of these guys. Half of the Republican Roman army have to be made up of a Stadi Principe and the Triarii combo, right? These guys, let's say they all charge, okay? Divisional charge. Do, 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 do. They make it in. It's all fine and dandy. Okay? They better have something behind them. Because I know if you're fighting Carthaginians, or if you're fighting almost any other army, if they've got a bunch of light troops, you're going to have guys coming around and flanking you, and your small units have nothing in the back. Um, they might have the Triarii, which can hold off one side, but chances are they do not. So that's one thing that I am going to have to be wary of when I'm fighting and playing Hail Caesar, because um, if I commit all my small units into, if I take two of my expensive units into one of the enemy's single expensive unit, I'm putting more points, more men into, into the one where the enemy most likely will have other troops to get around me. Especially Gauls, if you've played war against armies that have war bands, um, they're gonna have standard size units. They might even have large units in there, but they will have like cavalry and stuff to sneak around. So I feel as the Republican Romans, you better uh, get in there and kill them quick because the enemies are more than likely gonna use cheaper troops to get around and do flank and rear attacks that are gonna cause all sorts of uh, things that aren't fun. And one thing more to note too is that you got to make sure when you're charging that your center, center fronts are facing the enemy, right? In Hail Caesar, directly front is where they go. So in this scenario, both of them, if I gave them an order to both charge this enemy, bam, they'd fly in there and they'd charge them. However, let's say this guy's here, right? He's off to the side. We'll pull it back a little bit so you can see. He's off to the side. I want them both to charge that. He's not in the center front, okay? That means chances are, if I want to get there, I'm going to have to be able, to, I'm going to have to turn and get him there, which may cost more moves, right? You are able to move the last, you, you know, you get three moves in Hail Caesar, and the last move can be a charge. So, I mean, if I get two moves, I can like turn and then charge in as long as he's facing them. But if I only get one move, this guy's going in. What's this guy doing? He moves his six to the best he can. So it's very important as a Republican Roman commander to make sure your troops are lined up properly with the enemies, making sure that the Romans are facing the fronts, their small units are lined up properly in the checkerboard formation, the maniple formation. So I think that's almost everything I want to cover. 
Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, when the battle reports come out, because there's going to be all sorts of fun scenarios. I mean, say they're fighting here, and these guys are here, well, they're not going to charge. If I'm doing proximity, I can, oh, I'll just move them in to support. This is not a charge, this is a, I'm supporting there. That's something you have to going to have to remember, too. Um, but yeah, there's lots of little rules. Uh, I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play out a little bit of a, I'm going to play out the rules and fight. Let's just do a little scenario here, see if the Romans can defeat these enemy Illyrians. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at these guys here. Let's change our camera angle, maybe. Get that nice little background in there. Let's have a fight. So it's the Roman turn. Let's say the general's right here. He's going to order these guys. Okay, go forth and attack. The general's going to roll. It's his command phase. Um, they could use their initiative, but he's not because it's over six. He wants to have them both charge in. Normally, generals in the Roman army can be upgraded to nine. So let's say it's nine. All right, so I need a number of nine of us. I get an eight. Okay, that's not good. Why is it not good? It's not an eight, sorry. It's a seven. That is good. <laughs> If it was an 8, it's not good, because now that I've got 2 less than my general's command, they are able to move 2 movements, which is plenty, and that means they both will charge right in, okay? They both have the same order to charge, they both face the center front, they're in there now. We'll go right up to them from the back. Alright, so now it's the Romans' turn. Let's use the proper units of study, and then these guys are just light infantry. So I have a clash of five, the uh, light infantry velites, they have uh, velites, they have a clash of three. Um, we will do, I guess I could do them all together. These guys do get a minus one though, it's because of Kalem. So let's just do, how many guys is that, eight? Let's do the Romans first, because the saves are slightly different. So the Romans get five attack with the clash. I'm gonna roll here, four is enough, we'll hit, well, it, they charge, and if they charge, it's gonna be plus one, so it's three enough. That's a good roll, right? That's a whole bunch of hits there, five of them. And the Illyrians are gonna have to roll five dice to save. Um, I don't think they have much armor, they're medium. They're gonna have six, because of the Pelum. Pelum has minus one to their armor. Uh, they don't save any, so you can see here right away, wow, five. They take five wounds right off the bat. Now my other guys here are attacking, they have a clash of three, four and up, I only get one. Um, these guys are a tough fighter though, and I think in tough fighter you can re-roll one, he misses anyway, it doesn't matter. They score another one, this one, the Illyrians are going to have a five and up armor because they don't have peel and no reduction, and he saves it with a five. Okay, now the Illyrians have a clash of six, let's just remember that they have five there. Okay, the Illyrians have a clash of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and they're gonna attack back. Now, because there's two enemies fighting them, they can choose, I guess, to split up their attacks. Um, if they were if there were enemies flanking or going in the rear, they'd have to divide their attacks up, but at least half their attacks would have to go to the front. But in this scenario, I'm just gonna put three on the Romans and three on the um, Velites there. So, three attacks on these guys, they didn't charge. Well, these guys, um, I forgot that these guys charged, so they could have, I don't think they did. Doesn't matter, since I forgot. You gotta remember when you charge, you get plus one to your hits. <laughs> and I forgot in that situation. Anyway, so these guys here are gonna be attacked by three from the Illyrians. So, four is enough. That's not bad. Two of them. We'll just roll their saves right away, because that's one unit. So they only have six, they only have uh, light armors, light troops, they don't save any. Okay, so they're gonna take um, two wounds there. And then the other three attacks go on the Romans. Okay, they scored two. So the Romans have uh, four and up armor. And, okay, they save one. So the Romans here take one wound. It's all one engagement because they can be one engagement because they're all fighting a unit. So these guys won and these guys lost by two essentially, right? So we do a break test. It's a five minus the three. So they lost by two. Let's do a break test, see what happens. 
That's really bad. It's a five minus the two that they lost by, and the Illyrians would basically break and run. And then these guys would, um, yeah, two is definitely breaking and running. If they had gotten higher, they might stay and around a bit, but they broke right away. So you can see right there, just one example, how if you get, to, I think those are some pretty average rolls, but uh, if you're fighting medium troops that aren't Gauls, because Gauls have a high clash, the Republic and Romans, are, if, if those were both heavy guys, they'd probably do some pretty big damage on them. Anyway, I won't do too much more of that, so I'll save the rest for the battle reports. Hopefully that gives some of you guys on the Tritonia forum boards uh, a bit of an idea of how Hail Caesar works. Uh, any of you that uh, play Hail Caesar regularly, if you saw any mistakes or anything in my video that you think I've done wrong, please let me know. I don't want to play and make mistakes in the future. Um, and I am I am just human. I do not know <laughs> everything offhand. Uh, or leave me a comment how, in that last fight, in that little fight there. Did I do it right? Did I have the right engagement? I, I'm just going to have to go check the rules on how that works, but I'm pretty sure because it involved the one standard unit that it counted as one engagement. But in any case, if you have any comments or something you want to say, leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I definitely do try to update every week unboxings, model reviews, um, tactics like this, and eventually we're going to do some battle reports once I get my, more of my troops painted up here. So thank you for watching, and I hope you all have an excellent time. Goodbye now.